a lot. Um, ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> um, and all Kenyans who are uh, also following these uh, proceedings, we as Kenya Kwanza would like to make uh, a statement on a matter that is of grave concern to the people of Kenya. Uh, yet, what we have seen is that uh, people seem to be scatting around it. Yet the issues are extremely critical. So today, on behalf of Kenya Kwanza, I will be making a statement. Uh, it's a fairly comprehensive one. So I would uh, really plead that uh, you listen carefully. Perhaps questions that you may wish to raise later may be in it. But uh, we shall also make sure that you get um, it as soon as I finish. Uh, this is a press statement by the Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance. Um, and it's titled this way. Uhuru government auctions Kenyan ports in breach of the constitution. Today we reveal to Kenyans a clandestine plot by the outgoing handshake government of Uhuru and Raila to illegally mortgage our ports of Mombasa, Lamu and Kisumu to a foreign country. In a secret deal under the guise of an economic cooperation agreement with the United Arab Emirates and which optimizes grand corruption, Uhuru has assented to a ripoff that will see a foreign privately registered entity, Dubai Port World FZE, take over these key national infrastructural assets. And we shall be releasing a letter signed by the CS Treasury to this entity. Indeed, why would a government with only less than five weeks to leave office hurriedly and secretly auction the operations, development, redevelopment, and management of all our ports to a foreign entity. An accountable government should confide in Kenyans why national strategic and security assets are being handed over to a foreign entity. The government should also tell Kenyans why it is risking national security in a clandestine deal at the behest of seemingly vested local interests in the offshore company. Under the ill-disguised economic cooperation agreement, supposedly signed on March 1, 2022 by the CS Treasury, Mr. Okur Yatani, Kenya will cede ownership and control of not only the three ports, but also supporting infrastructure at the ports in the hinterland. It is shocking that Dubai port will take over the development, operations, management and expansion of transport logistics service in the Republic of Kenya. The deal was mooted in a meeting in Mombasa disguised as Raila's birthday party attended by outgoing President Uhuru Kenyatta, Raila Odinga and the Governor of Mombasa Ali Hassan Joho, amongst other state agents who are the principal beneficiaries of the deal. Kenyans will also remember that soon thereafter the trio made several trips to Dubai jointly and severally. In this sinister scheme that contravenes the Public-Private Partnership Act, a superficial foreign entity will take charge of one redevelopment of BATS 11 to 14 and a special economic zone at the Mombasa port. Two, equipping and operating the container terminal at the port of Lamu. Three, development of a special economic zone next to the port of Lamu. Four, development and operating cold chains and logistic parks at both Kisumu and Naivasha. In contention is not just that national assets are being disposed of sneakily, but also the illegality in the opaque 
and hurried nature of this transfer of national assets. Government cannot hide under the Public-Private Partnership Act. Kenyans want to know the details of the contract and whether it adheres to procedures for the identification, selection, feasibility study, pretender approval, tendering, negotiation, post-tender approval, monitoring, and evaluation of the projects as provided under the Public-Private Partnership Act. We challenge the government to make public any process and procedure under the Public-Private Partnership Act used to procure such a massive tender. Let Kenyans know the parameters used to initiate the project proposals, to show whether the tender was competitive and how the tender was awarded to one company without opening the, uh, the tender for open bidding, noting the costs implications. In protocols observed, if any, in negotiations and the negotiations between the parties. We would like to see all this. Least the government plays ignorant, we reiterate, or rather lest the government plays ignorant, we reiterate that the government of Kenya owes its citizens an explanation as to why the following legal issues were glossed over. One, lack of public participation, opaqueness, and secrecy of the takeover. We at Kenya Kwanzaa are sure that until now, Kenyans did not know that there is an ongoing secret process to have our ports taken over by a company based in UAE. This is proof that this may be an engagement between a few people in government who may be keen to conclude the illegal deal with speed before government changeover in August. B. We remind an ethical government operatives that Article 10 of the Constitution spells out the national values and principles for all state officers making decisions. They are obligated to hold public participation consultations. We hold the government guilty of the illegality in engaging a foreign company with no consultations and without any information to the public. A few people cannot sit and by a stroke of the pen hand over our national strategic assets to a foreign company. They are in breach of the constitution for abuse of power and whose improper motive is the possibility of corrupt deals being made by them. Secondly, there is the blatant violation of Article 227 of the Constitution and the Public Procurement and Asset Disposal Act of 2015. Article 227 of the Constitution, as read with the Public Procurement and <coughs> Asset Disposal Act of 2015, provides that when a state organ contracts for services, such as procurement, should be done through a system that is fair, equitable, transparent, competitive, and cost-effective. The government should explain how Dubai Port World, FZE, was identified to take over our national assets and whether the contract meets the criteria of fairness, equity, transparency, competitiveness, and value for money. In Article 227 of the Constitution as read with the Public Procurement and Disposal Act. Additionally, government owes Kenyans answers to the following questions. Who owns Dubai Port World FZD? Is it a company owned by local senior state officials? How much tax payers money has been given to the company so far? Which other companies applied to do the job, if any? What is the value of the contract? And why were the provisions of Section 134 of the Public Procurement and Asset Disposal Act not complied with? 
Further, Kenyans must also know whether the procurement of the company was a government-to-government -government agreement, and if so, why Section 4.2, Subsection F of the Public Procurement and Asset Disposal Act did not apply. Three, non-involvement of Parliament. A matter as critical and fundamental as to take over of our national strategic asset cannot be purported to be constitutionally processed and concluded without the involvement of Parliament. Articles 93, 94, 95, and 96 of the Constitution that spell out the roles of Parliament were breached. It is not surprising, but is still shocking, that the Departmental Committee on Transport of the National Assembly, responsible for all matters transport, including our ports, is unaware of this scheme. By passing Parliament puts the viability of the projects at risk, given that the handover is scheduled to take place when Parliament is on a sane die, ensuring the illegality and corruption is affected and interrupted. There is also the issue of public interest. Where is the public interest in allowing takeover of our national strategic assets by a foreign company? Are Kenyans unable to manage our ports to a point where we cede these national strategic assets to foreigners? Are there no Kenyan companies that can redevelop cold chain logistics in Naivasha port? Further, lack of public interest raises serious concerns or questions about government commitments <coughs> to Kenyans. What are the local content requirements provisions in the Lamo takeover contract? Will our people continue working at the port? Which public interest is served by redeveloping the Naivasha inland port? In whose interest, therefore, are our national assets being auctioned without citizens knowing? The answers to these questions only lead to one conclusion. The ongoing auction is meant to divert billions of shillings to some corrupt people's pockets, five weeks to elections, and further benefit senior state officers with undisclosed interests in the ports. Fifth, non-involvement of the counties. Paragraph 18 of Part 1 and Paragraph 5 of Part 2 of the fourth schedule to the Constitution provides that transport, including matters relating to ports and harbors, is a function within the concurrent jurisdiction of both the national and county governments. It appears expedious corruption that the counties of Lamu, Mombasa, and Nakuru, Kisumu. and Kisumu were not consulted in respect to the auction of the ports. But this is not new. It is the history of this government that it chooses to abrogate the constitution whenever state officers' interests are, st are at stake. Sixth, there's the lack of cabinet approval on national strategic assets. And ladies and gentlemen, you will recall here that cabinet did not meet for almost two years. Same. Yes. It was after the hue and cry from Kenya Kwanzaa that we saw a cabinet meeting being convened a few weeks ago. Ports the world over form part of national strategic security assets in the security architecture of a country. It shames Kenyans that the takeover of our national strategic and security assets by a foreign entity has been done without cabinet approval. It is our submission that national strategic assets belonging to the people of Kenya cannot be auctioned by one person in a manner akin to disposal 
of private personal property. In conclusion, in the light of the foregoing, we wish to go on record and call out the President of Kenya on this matter. There's a famous saying, we all know that if it looks like a duck, swims like a duck, and quacks like a duck, then probably it is a duck. Absolutely. From the shortcuts we have exposed, the auction of our ports look like corruption, it is swimming like corruption, it is shouting like corruption, and it is certainly corruption. corruption. Kenyans are probably <coughs> staring at the biggest corruption scandal ever. It is a clever machination to fleece Kenyans of billions of shillings before a new government takes over. In fact, the establishment of the Azmio political outfit was principally intended to perpetuate state capture and to privatize national strategic assets using offshore companies mm -hmm. whose agents are in the top echelons of Azmian leadership. Shame. <coughs> if government is humble enough to come clean, the starting point should be to tell Kenyans who owns the contract company and what interests senior state officers have in the company. As patriotic Kenyans, we say no to any plan to defraud our people. God bless you and God bless Kenya. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is a long statement. I will need a breather. <laughs> it was so serious, but my colleagues are also here. Uh, and and uh, the letter of Yatani is also going to be attached to the statement so that there's a basis uh, for this communication.